uh, you will find it in the part three of that video. And inshallah, that will be out when? Next week, inshallah. Or you'll find it in a little dua book called The Fortification of Husn Muslim. It's a little dua book. It's in there fully, inshallah. You'll find it there. Tadal Habibi. Allah, like I mentioned that very, very explicitly last week, which is a good reminder. Our beloved young fella here is saying to us that when Ramadan appears, the people go to their houses to Allah and they put the garments of worship and obedience, the garments of Islam or the garments of Allah on. And then as soon as Ramadan ends, they take that garment off and they put the garment of disobedience and wickedness and mischievousness. And they think that Allah Ta'ala that, that Allah Ta'ala is only in Ramadan. These are known to be the Ramadan worshippers. The Ramadan worshippers and how wretched are the Ramadan worshippers. If you are fasting and you touch someone from the opposite sex, does it nullify the fast? Absolutely not. It does not nullify the fast. Nor does it nullify your wudu, but you are not allowed to touch the opposite sex unless it's accidental. Unless it's accidental. So those who work with the likes of Secretary Sandy, <laughs> you are not allowed to shake her hand. You are not allowed to shake her hand. You are not allowed as a Muslim man to touch the hand or the body of a lady who is allowable for you to marry. Who is allowable for you to marry. But if you do touch it, uh, it, is, it is not a nullifier of the fast, nor is it a nullifier of wudu. Now, Habibi, What is the best time to do gym during Ramadan? Gym? Allahu Akbar. I just have to see your body and that explains everything to Barakallah. <laughs> Allah يحفظك إن شاء الله. المؤمن الكوي خير ما أحبه إلى الله. المؤمن ضعيف. Strong believer is more liked and loved to Allah Taala from the weak believer. You تبارك الله. You can be a model. تبارك الله. Obviously, the gym work is extremely important whether in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. Now, many people take a break in Ramadan in order that they 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 revitalize their bodies for worship. But I don't see a problem with doing gym work. Even during the month of Ramadan, there are times when you have that energy throughout the day that you are capable of doing gym work. But be be moderate, be light, especially after Asr. Probably the best time is after Asr, or if you can do it at night time. At night time, as long as you do not uh, lose the act of worship, whether it's Tarawih, the Hajjud, or any other act of worship. But as long as you do the gym work with the intention that you're strengthening your body, you want to keep it hygienic, healthy, strong, this is an act of worship. This is an act of worship. So I advise every single believer, Muslim, male, female, to do gym work. To do gym work. Because unfortunately, as we mentioned, as we see today, one of the minor signs of the hour is that obesity will be in this nation. Obesity. And subhanAllah, you just have to look at the, the Western st statistics and you'll see this worldwide. It's a major problem today. To the extent where the schools have placed in their canteens uh, healthy food. Healthy food. And they've tried to obliterate the junk food. Why? Because they can see that, uh, that humanity today is a lax, layback humanity. It likes to sit down watching TV, on the net, on their games, especially the children. And this is no good. This is no good. You've got to be energetic. You've got to be strong. You've got to be healthy. In order to get to, to be healthy, you must work out. Naam ya Umar. Salamatullah. Can you repeat that, please, uh, Amr?
There are opinions on this. The pregnant and breastfeeding woman, what is the opinions on this? Some scholars said that she has to fast and plus pay a ransom. Other opinion, other scholars said that she only has to fast. Others said no, she only must expiate by paying a ransom and not fast. What's the hadith for all of this? We've got an authentic narration, three narrations, three, from Abdullah ibn Umar. When a person came to him in al bayhaqi you'll find it, in al bayhaqi Sahih transmission, it's as true as light, that he was asked about the pregnant lady. She was having difficulty in fasting. What shall she do? And the answer to that is, when he answered the question, she refrains from fasting, and she pays a ransom by feeding a mud of wheat for, for every day she missed. Another narration mentions a lady came to him and said, Ya, ya Umar, Ya Ibn Umar, Ya Abdullah, I cannot fast. I'm pregnant. What shall I do? He said, refrain from fasting and pay a ransom for each day to a poor person and do not fast. The hadith is clear as light, and do not fast. There's another narration. One of his daughters is married to a Quraysh, a man from Quraysh. And she was extremely thirsty, and she was pregnant. So he ordered her to break her fast and to pay uh, a ransom by feeding a poor person for every day. These are all authentic narrations. Abdullah ibn Abbas, likewise, said that the pregnant and breastfeeding woman feeds a poor person for each day she misses and that's it. Now these are, these are authentic narrations. You don't want to accept that? It's up to you. To make it up, you have to have proof. Oh, I don't see it as acceptable. Where's the proof for that? The law that Allah Ta'ala has legislated, the lawgiver is not me or you, Ya Umar. We are not the lawgiver. The lawgiver is the Almighty Lord. That is the expiation. With all respect to the other opinions, there is clear, explicit narrations. Now they use the other opinions. Their evidence was, with all respect, that they used an analogy. They said she is similar to the sick person. This is not a correct analogy, is it? They said, referring to the verse, "Woman kana minkum maridan aw ala safarin." They considered her sick, but she's not sick. She's pregnant. And since there's a narration from Ibn Umar and Ibn Abbas, that suffice for me. Authentic. Allah hafazak, insha'Allah. Naam ya Khalid. Salaamullah. Business. As for the first question, is there any evidence that initiating uh, a business in Ramadan is preferable or prioritized? No, I do not know of any narration to confirm that. Uh, as for the second question, Eid should be prayed according to the sunnah, and the sunnah is to pray it outside, in the open, not in the mosques. That is according to the sunnah. The only time you pray it inside is when there is rain. There is rain or an obstacle that prevents you from praying it outside. So if you want to go and act according to the sunnah, pray it inside. Outside, sorry. When a girl is on her menses, does she still fast her food but does not pray? Does she have to make up for the days she missed? If she does not pray, don't bother fasting. If you do not pray, don't fast. You're wasting your time. No, I'm Ali. Excuse me, Ali, what was that? Ahsan Allah, I've just seen if you were attentive. I was seeing if you were attentive. I was only just testing you. I was only just testing you. Barakallah. Alhamdulillah, someone listening. <laughs>